everybody and welcome to another episode of Adventures with Andy. Every month, Chad and a couple of friends of ours have a challenge to paint a miniature. Uh, I don't mean like a miniature on a tiny little canvas. I mean a miniature like this. Um, RPG miniatures. Uh, I think they also sometimes get used for wargaming, but probably not this one because this is the one that Chad picked for me for the February 2020 challenge. No, we're not going, never going back to 2020. That was the year from hell. This is the one that Chad picked for me for the February 2021 challenge. It is an apothecary's cabinet. Bring it in a little so you can see. It has lots of teeny tiny little things, lots of tiny details to do. Um, I think he wanted to really push me on this one. Uh, it is by this company and we're going to paint this today. Why did you choose this mini for me? Well, it's just, you know, it's not a figure per se, not a humanoid figure or a creature or anything like that. It's just something different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Most, most minis that you paint are figures of some sort. Humanoid creatures, monsters, um, you know, there, there just don't seem to be a lot of the, you know, background pieces. And I have been mentioning that to Chad, so. All right, first thing we need to do is get it out of the packaging. My God, they stapled this one. Good. They did not want this to get away. No. What is in this cabinet? What did this alchemist create that they had to seal it away so good? A little homunculus in there. Oh dear. Well, what do we say is always the worst thing that could happen? Homunculus. Yeah. Gain sentience. <laughs> Take over the world. Mm -hmm. Oh dear. Uh, maybe I can tame him. All right, I got that off. Now, before we can start painting this, first I need to clean it just in case there's any residue left from any mold release that they used when they were casting this. Just going to use some Dawn dishwashing liquid, a little bit of water, and just put it on here. Try to get in all the nooks and crannies, which is going to be really hard on this one because there's lots of nooks and crannies. All right, and now I just don't want to move. Apologize for the noise. All right, just put it here in the water. Rinse it really good. It is not going to want to come out of the nooks and crannies. See? Mm -hmm. Why don't you run into some moving water for a second? Uh, maybe. Our mini is now dry, so next up we need to prime it. And I've got three options here for primer, white, gray, and black. Primer serves two purposes. Um, the first is that it gives the regular paint something to grab a hold to. It's got a little bit more tooth to it than what you can get just on the mini itself. The other thing that it does is it can actually affect the way the paint over it looks. So if you use a white primer, it's going to make the, the paint that you use for the mini brighter than if you use a black primer. It would look darker. And for this one, I'm going to go ahead and use gray, which is just going to have a neutral effect on the paint. You might be wondering what this is. This is uh, a little gadget that you can use to put the mini on and hold this instead of the mini when you're painting it. So that I don't get as covered in paint as I did like when I was painting the, the pegs for my yarn drying rack. So it's got just um, like some, it's kind of like Sculpey. Um, I would say it's green stick, but it's orange. What is this, Chad? It's just um, like poster tack. Ah, it's like poster tack, if you know what that is. The, the stuff that you put up on the walls in your dorm room in college to, to stick your posters to so you don't put holes in the walls. Press this on here really good. And then this swivels so that you can turn it around. You can hold this upside down, which is 
it's more useful if you're using a, if you're painting a mini that's not just flat on the bottom like if you're painting a tree or a fighter or something you need to get under robes or you know armpits things like that but makes it a little bit easier to move these around so let's go ahead and prime this we just want to cover the whole surface i'm not going to cover the bottom because by not covering the bottom that'll make it easier to adhere it to a base later if i want to do some basing on this now normally on these paints you can put them on the palette and you just squirt them out like any other paint but since i'm only going to be using this i'm just going to go ahead and pop that top off and take it directly out of the bottle that way I don't end up wasting any. And this is, it's actually a fairly thin consistency. Is that correct, Chad? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, normally Chad's the one who primes minis because he wants me to paint a mini and I am the queen of procrastination and he is the king of let's get it done, it needs to be done. So he'll just grab it and do it because I've been dawdling. But I have primed a few in my day, haven't I? You have? I have. So that's got all of our primer on there. And now it just needs to dry, then we can get on to base coating. Our priming is dry, and now we're ready to do our base coating. I have little bitty, teeny, tiny paint brushes for this, because there's lots of little bitty, teeny, tiny details. Got myself some fresh water for cleaning my brush. I've got a paper towel and I have this. This is a magnifier. It does have a light to make it easier for me to see. So first thing we need to do is we need to pick some paints. And to do that, we need to decide how we want to paint this. That's the first thing to think about is, okay, what am I wanting to do with this? And don't worry about, you know, all the details at this point. You just want to think about, okay, what color would I want this to be? All right, so the bookcase itself, the wood, I want that to be brown. Now I wanna use a couple of different shades of brown because I want like the trim here to be darker than the wood in the back. And I think I might wanna do the doors a slightly different color, I'm not sure yet, um, for like this, there's a little moon here on this disc. I'm mean, gonna want the disc to be probably a dark blue and the moon a yellow. I've got these books up here where I want the pages to be a white. The covers can be different colors. All these little bottles. Those are gonna be difficult because I want it to have a glass effect, you know, to look like actual transparent glass. If I was asking Chad how he does that, because he's been doing this for years and is really good at this and is much better at this than me. And what'd you say when I asked you how you do glass effects? I don't. <laughs> what he said was, I've never successfully done that. Yep. So. Here's your chance to shine. Here's my chance to shine. Here's my chance to at least not do worse. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna try some things to see what uh, I can come up with. So I just need to figure out what colors I wanna do. Um, I'm going to start with painting all the wood first and then I'll go back and I'll paint the base layer of everything else. And I am going to paint the base layer of all of these at once. Um, it's not going to be do paint the base layer of the wood and then do the next step on the wood and the next step and the final step and finish all the wood and then go back and do everything because then you just end up having to redo things over and over and over. Base layer of everything, base coat everything first and then move on to the next step. Okay, over here we have Chad's rolling cart of paints and supplies for painting minis. He's got paints here, he's got paints here, he's got paints here. 
I am breaking things. I'm sorry. It's a tool. We have a lot of choices for colors. I mean, there's like all these different shades of green and it can lead to some analysis paralysis as you're like, do I want this one? Do I want this one? Do I want this one? Yeah. Which, which brown do I want? Oh my gosh, there's so many different shades of brown. Which one do I want? Do I want to go purple? Yeah. And that's why we've got to start, that's why we started first with thinking, okay, how do we want to paint this many? What do we want to do? And like we know that we want three different shades of brown. So I'm going to take a few minutes to pick out some paints and then we'll come back and put them on our mini. Okay, so I've got my paints picked for my base. Um, I know it looks like I've got a lot here, but that's just because there are so many details and I want to try to do um, different colors on some of the, the bottles and things. Um, I've also got these two which Chad said they're for special effects, kind of. What are they? Are those the contrast paints? Yes. Yeah, they're just designed to be put over a white or gray primer to try to quickly build up a glaze effect. Yeah. So I'm going to try these on a couple of the bottles and see how they work, if they give me the, the bottle glass effect that I'm looking for. If they don't, I'll just go back to like these regular base paints. I've also got one in a yellow to try to do like amber glass. So, but first we're going to start with our wood. Now I've got two different types of bottles here because different manufacturers use different types of bottles. Uh, these are like the ones that we used that our primer was in. These are by Citadel and Chad tells me apparently the community is split over these bottles. Either people love them or they hate them. I love them because they have a built-in cup, little reservoir that holds the paint for you as you're painting. So you don't need a palette if you're using one of these bottles. What some people don't like about them is if um, they're wanting to mix different paints to come up with a different color. It's not really user friendly for that because you can mix these paints just like any other acrylic paint to come up with a new shade. So these I will have to use a palette. I got my palette. It's clean. And let's get going on this. I'm going to start with my large brush and I'm going to paint First, this dark brown. And I will probably be speeding this up because this is going to take me a very long time to do. And yes, even though there's really not any detail on the back of this bookcase, sorry, the back of this alchemist cabinet, I am going to paint it because depending on how I end up uh, using this in a diorama or basing it or anything, it could be visible. Better to paint it now and be able to make that decision later of if I don't want to show it than to not paint it, want it to be positioned in a way that it would show and have to go back and paint it. to put the paint on thick enough to cover but not too thick or you'll lose details like the wonderful wood grain that they've put in on the carving that they cast this mini from.
have finished base coating our first color. Yay! Let me rinse off my brushes. I can switch to the next one. Now that our base coats are on here and dry, and it's looking really good so far. Pretty pleased with it. Um, technically, if we wanted to, we could put some, you know, color on the hinges and doorknobs here and polyurethane it and call it done. But we're not going to because we're going to do some detail work just to give this more dimension. Um, make it look more realistic. We're going to do that by adding layers and washes. And this is the part that always makes me nervous because it's really easy to screw it up by overworking it. By just doing too much, you take it too far, you screw it up. And overworking things is my Achilles heel when it comes to art. So I always get really nervous at this, this point. But if you see the be easier to see it if I use this as a pointer. But you see like on the, the blue bottle here, um, and even some to some degree on these green ones here, how it's not just a flat blue and it's not just a flat green. That's the kind of thing that we're wanting to do now. So that it's not just a flat color. Like here on this section of the brown, it's just a flat brown. And wood is not just a flat color, even if it's finished. If you look here at my desk, it's finished. And okay, ignore the scratches and bits of paint and stuff. It's a really old desk. I've had it like 15 years or so. Um, but there's different shades. It's, it's a little lighter here, a little darker here, somewhere in between there here. And that's what we're going to build up now 
on these base colors to give it that real dimension. So I've got a variety of different washes, which are a really, really thin, watery paint, and then some other colors that I can use for doing what's called dry brushing. And when I do that, when you do this, what you want to think about is what is the story that this is telling? What, what has happened to this in its world? You know, we've got right here, we've got some doors. And as the alchemist has been working, getting stuff out of the cabinets, putting them in, you know, in the drawers as well, where has he touched the most? Where hasn't been touched at all? So probably along the top corners here on the inside and around these handles are the points where they've gotten the most wear. Um, you can't see it, but along the edge of my desk here, it's, the finish has gotten really worn. It's really light there over time because that's where I tend to stand or when I'm sitting here leaning or rub up against walking by it. Um, so that's where it's gotten the most wear. And that's what we kind of want to try to mimic here. Whereas down here in the corners and the bottom here, it's really not going to get touched at all. Um, especially here around this section where you've got the, the little moon pendant. That's not going to have gotten touched at all. So it's still going to be darker. And especially these parts that are down at the bottom, being in a workshop, they've probably gotten kind of dirty. So we're going to try to darken this up a little here, lighten these corners here and along around here. And even though we've got this here that's going to add shadow to it, that'll add some more depth to it by doing that. You don't have to do a wash in the same color as your base coat. You can or you can use different colors to create different tonal effects. So for example, this is Drakenshade Nightshade, which is a blue wash. And we're just going to test that on the side of this cabinet and see what kind of effect do we get with that. And as you see, like I said, it's very, very watery. So it will get in these creases, these lines, really easy. And you can just dry off your brush and sort of drag it up to blend it. And you can do multiple layers of a wash. And you can see how using that blue wash on the brown sort of gives it a bit of a grayish black tone as opposed to the monochromatic feel that you could get using just another brown on there. I'm going to go ahead this whole side here and just do the wash on it because this has been off in the corner and nobody really messes with it too much. You can also go over a wash a second time after it's dried, like if I wanted to down here and build it up. And you can see how this side 
and it's still drying of course so that'll change a little bit but this side already compared to that side looks less plasticky looks more like wood it's definitely got some more dimension to it so i'm going to keep working on this and doing washes in some other spots and when i get to a point where i'm going to be doing some dry brushing um i'll come back and i'll explain a little bit more about that because it's it's kind of the complete opposite technique um a wash you can cover the whole area with it and dry brushing and and a wash is very very watery paint dry brush very dry paint on your brush and only in very select areas. switch over to some Agrax Earth Shade, which is, what did you say, it's sort of a greenish blackish brown yeah. color. More like a cooler brown versus the right yeah. one, which is a warmer brown. Yeah. And I'm going to use that in some of the corners to create a different shade. Just a little. That's a nice one. to do some dry brushing. I still got some spots of the washes that are drying. That's fine. They'll dry while I'm working on other things. Um, dry brushing is where you put in your highlights or, well, I'm going to be putting in highlights. You can also do sort of a reverse where you dry brush on a darker color than your base coat and it gives sort of an internal glow to things. We're going to start on the side just so that we can test it out. And I've got just the tiniest little bit of paint on my brush. And then I'm going to go on this paper towel and I'm actually going to wipe most of it off. Okay. And then we're going to think about, okay, where would be a place that would have gotten a lot of wear? So how about just right here. And you just brush that on just very, very lightly on the edges. Oop, that might be too much. And if you do get a spot like that where you get a little bit too much on, that's fine because you can go back with a wash again and just go between Washes and dry brushing and washes and dry brushing, alternating those to build up the look until you get to what you want. And you can use any color that you want for dry brushing. They do make special dry brush paints 
but really any regular acrylic paint will work for it. So we had talked about how up here you'd expect there to be some wear from him opening and closing these cabinet doors. So we're going to do that real quick. And then down here some. And you want to go, for lack of a better way to put it, you want to go against the grain of what you're painting. If you go the same direction as like a, a one thing this can be used on is to highlight folds in clothing um, where it folds out into a peak. If you go the same direction as that fold, then you're quite likely to get a little bit too much paint like I did here. So you want to go against that edge against that grain so you get just the edge of it. So here on the top I'm doing that direction to get the top edge. Here on the sides I'm doing this direction to get those. And it's not just where there are edges, it's where there's a highlight or in the case of our wood, where there's going to be wear on it. So I'm not going to go around every single edge here and do this. That would look fake. We're just going to go in the areas where we would expect there to be more wear. I think I need a little bit more. Or we were, where we would expect there to be a highlight. So like the edge of this plate here, I think maybe there's a highlight along this edge. So we'll go ahead and do that. It doesn't stand that much because this is very, very close in color. And that's fine. I could go back and do it again in white. Maybe along the edge of this jug container. Definitely on the edge of our books. One of the things that's really nice about washes is they'll get in between things, the lines like this, and it's a really nice, easy way to do like pages and creases and things. I'm gonna put some foxing on the edges of these books, on the corners. Little highlights here on the edges of this thing holding the test tubes. Yeah, a little bit of blue to work on that moon real quick. There's a little fungus or mold or something growing up on the side of this cabinet, maybe. Right? Mm hmm. Experiment gone wrong. You like experiment gone right. And yes, dry brushing is really rough on your brushes, so it's best to keep a specific brush that's not your favorite for doing this.
spots to touch up with some washes. I think I just got a little bit heavy handed with the highlights and also to help blend things in some. happy with that. So now I'm going to see about doing these hinges and drawer pulls. And for that, I've got to decide which color black I want. And that's a tough one because I want to approximate iron. Because obviously, if you look at the shape, the shape that his uh, apothecary cabinet is in, this particular alchemist is not exactly rolling in the gold. So I don't think he's going to have like silver hinges or anything. Just something very basic. So I've got some shadowed steel here, which is a metallic. Let's see how it looks. And if it's a little bit too fancy, then we can turn it down. Yeah, I think that's a bit too too silver. I'm gonna go over all of these with it anyway, just so we're all working from the same starting point. See, that's what I should have done on all of these is start with a black base and then dry brush it with some of this silver and that would nicely approximate cast iron or forged iron. That's okay, it'll be fine. It will be fine. So I'm going to try mixing it. I've got some pure black here. I'm going to try mixing it with what I've got left of that shadowed steel. Let's see if I can get sort of a sparkly black. So I had Chad hit this with a couple of coats of spray matte varnish today while he was outside in the garage working on stuff. And that serves a couple of purposes. It seals the paint so that there's not as much risk of it scratching off, uh, getting scraped off or anything. But it also knocks down the shine. So it's still a little shiny in places. It's not going to completely eliminate the shine. And it's falling off of here. Gravity is owning me, y'all. Ah, okay. Um, it doesn't completely eliminate the shine, but it knocks it down. He could do some more coats to knock down the shine even more. Um, but he really likes how this turned out. And he was afraid of getting too much back in the, the nooks and crannies and causing some bubbles or anything. And yeah, he keeps, he's come in here all morning because yeah, we're on day three now of painting this. He keeps coming in here all morning, picking it up and looking at it. Um, so I think he likes how this one turned out. 
Um, but I am now going to go over it with some brush on gloss varnish just over some of the bottles that I want to look like glass to see if we can get a bit more of that shiny glass look like this, these blue ones and the, the green ones. Probably not this one because I ended up painting it more like earthenware. Um, obviously, definitely this right here is going to get some of that on there to make it look more like glass these back here in the back maybe just on the blue on this one back here if i can get it back in there without hurting anything not that one because that's also earthenware um but possibly this green one right here and the test tubes up on the top just to try to mimic more of a glass effect with them and then maybe along like some of these wood areas where it's still kind of shiny um i've got a brush on anti-shine matte varnish that I can brush on there to, to try to knock down the shine even more if I want to. Like here on the doors, on these cabinet doors here, the shine got knocked down really good and that looks really good. And here in some of the wood areas, but like along the top here, it still looks a little, a little bit too shiny for my taste. Maybe on the sides, some of the wood just still looks a little bit too shiny. Um, for what I think it would be like in this alchemist's laboratory. And you can do the entire thing with a brush on varnish instead of using spray varnish. You don't have to use spray varnish. Um, I just find that I think you get better coverage and less of a risk of brush marks and bubbles as well if you do a spray varnish. And I've got out my teeny tiny detail brush for this and you want to make sure that your brush is really clean for this part because if there's any paint left on here at all it will mix in with that varnish and it will tint things over again and can darken the color up and I think this is dark enough already. And this starts out white it does dry clear though. In the background you hear Monet meowing because he is under some sort of mistaken impression that he should be allowed in my office. He is not. You're not coming in here, baby. No. This blue one's really tough because I want to get it on the bottle part, but not the cap. Because I mean, that cap looked like it was one of the iron ones, sort of like the, the hinges and cabinet poles. I just, we just came back in here from lunch. So that's why Monet is losing his mind because he was with us and now he can't get to us. happy with that. So now I'm just going to get the anti-shine and put that in a few places where it needs it. Either for me accidentally getting gloss on stuff or just because I think it needs a little bit more. A little bit less shine. Here's the finished mini. I'm pretty pleased with this. I think it turned out really good. I, I'm very happy with it. But, uh, because I'm biased, it's my work, I thought I would turn this over to Chad, um, who is also the more experienced, I would say, expert mini painter in our house. And 
let him give you his thoughts on it. Uh, tell you what he thinks works, what I could have done better, um, things he liked, things he didn't like. Take it away, Chad! Thanks for having me in the studio today, Andy. Overall, I think the mini turned out great. I think she did an excellent job of taking this little alchemist cabinet and turning it into something that looks like it's been used and abused for years and years and years by the alchemists searching for that way to turn lead into gold and not finding a not finding a way. If he had found a way to turn lead into gold, then maybe, you know, he wouldn't have the mold growing on the top, which is a nice effect, or the mold growing down here in the back. You know, he might clean up a little bit. I mean, as long as we have the backside showing here. Another nice thing is this back was completely flat plastic, no texture at all. So I think he did an excellent job of using the paints to add in basically a wood grain and give it a nice effect, a nice uneven effect so it looks like it's different planks of wood that have been attached to the back to hold it all together. Turning it back around to the front. The wear she she did do very well. You can see where he's laid his hands across the edges and he's also used his hands to open and close the doors instead of the poles. Uh, and the books up here are very well worn. Um, let's see if I can get in a little bit closer on that. But yeah, you can see there's grime on the books, probably oil from his hands where he's thumbed through them over and over. I know she was going for a glass effect. Uh, it does look a little bit more like um, glazed ceramics maybe, but glass is very difficult to pull off. She also did a very good job of the, with the writing on the parchment using paint and the wear on the moon here is very good. Um, the choice to use different colors for the wood just adds an extra dimension where you've got the darker trim wood and then the lighter panels. If I were to do things differently, um, at least maybe at the top here, it looks like it looks like there's two different boards. I might have painted them two different boards up here. I might have painted them slightly different colors just to make it look like two different types of wood. Maybe an oak and a birch or something like that, just to add a little extra dimension. Maybe colored in the knots too, just to add some extra depth there. Um, but definitely want to continue playing around with her glazing technique here to see if we can refine it into one that, um, you know, looks like, you know, clear glass maybe with something in it or colored glass even. And I don't know if you can see this, but there is actually a little green thing trying to escape from the pot on the middle here. So apparently some experiment has gone awry. Or maybe it's going exactly how the alchemist had planned. Be nice if she took this cabinet and used it as the basis for an entire alchemist diorama where she built a little house, or maybe he's trapped in a king's dungeon toiling away with all the must and mildew that comes from a stone room underground. But Overall, I think it's an excellent job and can't wait to see what she does next. Thanks. Well, thank you for that feedback, Chad. I appreciate it. Lots to think about there. Um, and thank all of you for being here and watching me paint this alchemist cabinet. I hope you enjoyed the video and maybe learned some different techniques or tricks, different things that you can use in your own art, whether that's painting minis or painting paintings, drawings, um, sculpting, whatever it is you do to create and make yourself happy. I, I hope maybe you learned something. If you did, please drop me a, a note in the comments below. I'd love to hear about it. I'd love to see your art. Um, if you did enjoy the video, make sure you like it and be sure to subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications so that you never miss anything, and I will see you on our next adventure. Bye! Say bye, Chad! Bye, everybody! Bye!